on air. That's right, people. We are here live. This is Rakestraw Book Design Live Events, and I'm John Rakestraw, your host. And I have to tell you, this is a fantastic system that we have here. Google and Google Plus and YouTube have allowed us to put on live shows. Isn't that amazing? I mean, when you really think about it. Here we are. I have a panel of people. I have people from Canada, from uh, the dark reaches of America, both these guys here, and then from Vienna. Vienna, Austria. So I have a worldwide audience or people who just don't have anything better to do. I'm not sure which one it is. Actually, these are wonderful people. I have my band of wonderful minds. Hey, look at that. I got sun shining in on me. Isn't that beautiful? This gloomy gray day is suddenly shiny here in Oregon. So uh, that's beautiful. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're going to talk about today, well, I will tell you. We're going to talk about content, killer content. And I don't mean that fantastically grab your content. I'm talking about the content that's too much of it. <laughs> I mean, are we being overloaded with content? Is that too much content coming down the pike? I mean, is there too much fat and not enough nutrition in our content? Are we just being, so, I mean, for heaven's sakes, do we really need to know where you're running? Do I really need to know, you know, that you're eating at certain restaurant? Do I really need to know that you just bought something at the store? And you even show me what your groceries are? That's very nice of you, but do I really need to know that? Um, so it makes you wonder. Now, I can understand that you need to tell certain people, like your family or your friends or whatever, that you're having a, a dinner party and this is what I brought. What are you going to bring? I can see that. Or when you're walking down the street, you suddenly, it blops up on somebody's phone that you're actually eating in the restaurant right there but maybe you didn't want to ask them in to eat with you because you didn't personally ask them, but now they know. I mean, this is an interesting world we're starting to live in. Are we getting too much content? So that's what we're going to talk about today. There's many aspects to this. There's the idea that, uh, well, you know, we love having more than enough. We're, you know, demand. I love on-demand TV, and I guess that's what Internet's becoming is on-demand. So, uh, but some of it's not my, by my demand. Uh, some of it just comes to me because I circled somebody or I put them in a, you know, in a friendship area or I added them to some list and now I get information that I didn't really care to know or didn't need to know. So here we are. Are we overstimulated? Is that part of the whole thing? And is it burning us out? Are we all getting burned out? So we have a lot to talk about today, and I have a marvelous band of wonderful people. My merry band of wonderful minds is with me today, and that is C. Uh, J. C. Kendall, right down there. Great guy. I mean, this man has you know he is like me enjoys his food. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I've seen some of the stuff he puts up and tells me what he cooks. I mean, this guy is, I've already told him he's adopted. He can come live with me anytime. Oh, that's right. We never, we didn't finalize that. Yeah, I know, I know, because because I'm sending, I, I, my son's going off to E3, so yeah. <laughs> he gets a hold of me and says, I want to be adopted by you. <laughs> and it had nothing to do with food. I know, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, certainly, I would have rated the fridge, but oh yeah, once, yeah. once I'm adopted, I kind of get that right, right? Yeah, yeah, you do. You, but, do. you have access to the refrigerator. Yes, uh, I don't give you access to the real refrigerator, but no. It, it's it stand, it, it's it still stands. J. C. Rakestraw. That's, that's it. It, it, sounds, it works. It works. Well, it fun. works. It does. It does. it does. What does the J stand for? The J stands for Jonathan. See, you could even be a junior. I'm John. You're Jonathan. See, it works out. See, yeah. the C stands for Christopher. Ah, you know or, my mom. My it, mom wanted to call me Christopher. If my, you ask Sue Ann, it's, it's it stands for curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Jim Alt, the man who this guy does beautiful 3D graphics. He's also a major coder. I mean, if you want something coded, this guy knows about it. He doesn't want to talk about it because I don't think he likes to do it anymore. I don't know, but the man is a major coder. He understands coding. He understands all that stuff. It's amazing. Just to pick his mind, the things you will find out. Jim is a great asset, and uh, if you want to, please circle Jim. He's fantastic. Hey, we John? have the yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Sue Ann wanted to say hello. If you have a minute. Hi everyone. <laughs> hey, come uh, on. Hi. How are you guys? So good to see you. Nice to see you too. Wow. Did you want to join in or are you just going to stand back and listen to your 
your your better half. I'm standing back and listening to all of you guys. All right. Well, it's good to see you. All right. Good. Nice yeah, to meet fantastic. you. Fantastic. It's good. Uh, Notice he said better, not bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot of ground to talk on that area, you know. So I don't. <laughs> and then we have Harlan. Harlan. Now Harlan is a man who has done. I think 350 jobs in his lifetime. He has done many things. He's a fabulous artist. If you get an opportunity, he has some beautiful art out there. He's a writer. Uh, he's also the guy who chronicles every week our show. He puts up his take on what we did and what was going on. Harlan is the hundredth monkey, as I like to say. That's what I think he goes for that title. He's the hundredth monkey. You know the story. You throw a bunch of stuff into a room, and the hundredth monkey will make a you know a nuclear weapon. That's Harlan. So. And then we have the wonderful and beautiful lady from Vienna, Suzanne, and she's she's a marvelous lady. She has uh, what fifty thousand people following. Is that really true? Is it over fifty thousand circles? Are you that that you have that many people who have circled you? That is a you know. The, <laughs> most of them. And she also does art. She does a whole thing every day of a piece of art. She puts it up, major piece of art or a lesser known piece, gives us a description, who did it, and also her feelings about it. So that is on the web, on Google Plus, every morning. You can just go there and it's wonderful. And she's also been on my shows, pretty much almost all of them. There's only been a few. So she is a standard here. Without her, this show would sink. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to throw the topic on the table and have a conversation and conflict and fights. You know, we, we want that because you know, I don't want a bunch of yes people anyway. So let's start out with this. What do you guys feel about content? Are we over it? Are we over stimulated? Do we have too much? Are we being fed too much fat and not enough nutrition? Um, let's go with, uh, well, let's see. Who am I going to choose as my first victim today? Uh, well, okay, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to tell who's been doing the show for a while, first start, and that's Suzanne. Thank you. I feel I feel like the kids in, in school used to do, you know, when you lined up and somebody's picking you for a team. You know, it's like, you're gonna get picked <laughs> Am I going to get picked? Am I not going to get picked? <laughs> <laughs> this is one time where you probably go, oh, thank God I didn't get picked. <laughs> that's true. Well, I always said that in sports, too. <laughs> Okay, content. Uh, too much, too little, the right kind, the wrong kind. Two aspects. So one is what you share yourself, and the other is what gets shared with you, what you see in your own screen. Um, let's start with what you share yourself. There, too, I think you, there's, there's, again, two aspects to it. The one is the, the number of things that you share, the quantity. Um, I have a community where I have some people who share, it's, it's about art, and uh, there are people who will share like 10 pieces of their own work every day, and that just is considered spam. So sharing too much is not a good thing. You will get on people's nerves. Um, I think it, it just doesn't really um, add to the value of other people's streams. The other thing is that quality of what it is that you share. And as you said in your introduction, John, you know, I don't share, I am now going to the post office because no one cares, even I don't, okay? I don't want to go to the post office, I go because I have to. Um, so these are the kinds of things you don't really want to be bothering people with, apart from the fact that you have privacy issues. I'm always fascinated to see when I have to go on that other platform, you know, people checking in to hear and they're saying they're there and, and you know, they're giving their locations and this and that and the other thing. And, I mean, that's all very nice if you want to meet your friends, but it's also a really great way of letting people know that you're not home. And the same people who share where they are right now are usually the ones who have all kinds of pictures of their apartment numbers and their address and their cars and, and whatever. And, you know, there are increasing cases of, um, of of theft, fraud, all kinds of things that are based on these kinds of shares. So you, you need to be aware of that, you need to be careful. Um, that's as far as doing it yourself. As far as getting things from other people, 
I mean, hey, that's up to you, okay? If you're going to add um, every snowball circle that comes around into the plus, where all that's required to be part of the circle is to share it yourself, and then your name will be in the share tomorrow, um, you don't know what kind of quality people you're getting. And, you know, you, you more or less you deserve what you get, okay? Um, you, there's a saying in, in German, you have the kind of government that the population deserves because they voted for it. And I think the same applies to your stream. You have the kind of stream that you want to have because it's, at least on Google Plus, it's completely under your own control. So just as an intro, that was not, that was not my take on it. All right. Great. That's good. I, I, I like the way you brought up the security issues. I also like the way you brought up how you're responsible for your feed. That's true. We are responsible for who we circle, who we friend. Uh, who we put into our influence, our corners, you know, we are responsible for that. Uh, so that's very well put out there. So, JC, what do you think about this? What does this all mean to you? I mean, someone who has, who does a business online, this is not just uh, playtime for you. It's not just, I'm out here just having a good time. Yes, you do have your fun parts, but you also do run a business. How does this work with you on the idea of content? Is there too much? Are you worried about, you know, are we just putting up, you know, just whatever? Because a lot of people are. Do we have to stop and think about, is this important? Should I hit post for this? Is this something I should be talking about? You know, it's very, <clears throat> it's really difficult because there's a balance. Uh, because, because Tech Persona is so online focused, it's, it's kind of out there. Everybody knows what, what we do. Um, well, let me step back a bit. I was uh, the focus of an article on in Inc. Magazine about authenticity, where uh, the the writer was was somewhat concerned that that on Google Plus and on my blog and other places that I'm I'm out there, I'm forward. I let people know exactly what I think. Part of the reason for that is that I want the people who work with us, and a lot of people on Google Plus are our our, our clients, and we you know we hope for more all the time, but. I want them to get an expectation of what it's like to work with us. Not just that we're competent, but that we're either, well, kind of that, you know, we're fun loving and we, we, we poke fun at ourselves. And, and you know, I fight, a, I fight a battle all the time because it, this is not an approachable baby face. When people, you know, people don't see my face and go, oh, he's so cute. He's cute, cuddly, fluffy, all that stuff. So, I, you know, I, so I'm trying to let people know that while, I pretty much get to the point on in my writing and and comments about the industries that we work at the same time that I can be reasonable, I can joke, I can play. And I've had clients tell us that that you know I was kind of intimidated what it was going to be like to work with you because you're so adamant about certain things like content and SEO and things like that. And they looked at some of my other posts, my posts about the food and um, you know, me with dogs or me with kids. Uh, I posted a just. I was flying up from California uh, last week, and there was a baby sitting across the aisle from me. And this kid, this beautiful, beautiful little baby boy, um, he somehow was fascinating me. I'm watching uh, Battlestar Galactica on my phone, and I didn't think that got his attention. But so I, I took a picture. I asked his dad if I could take his picture. I took his picture, and then I posted. This little guy and I were talking marketing at 38,000 feet. <laughs> and, and just, a, just something a little funny, you know. Just, a, just, um, and it's not all for the purpose of marketing. I'm kind of, I'm kind of gregarious. I kind of, I like my life. I enjoy myself, and I like to share it with other people. That's one of the great things about being in Victoria is that I've, I've come across the perfect city for me. Um, <clears throat> I like sharing that. I like, I like sharing that with people. It's, it's, and some people find it fascinating. Some people don't. And I tell people if, if you know if, if 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 what I'm giving you you consider spam you can always mute me you can always uh, the kind of, the control is kind of in our hands. I uh, there was a guy who well he's still there I'm pretty sure there's some gentleman who posts dozens of beautiful pictures of flowers every morning about about eight thirty a.m. Pacific time every day twenty thirty pictures of flowers. Well, you know, if I'm on my phone, I don't want to see, even if I don't care how beautiful they are, I don't want to see 30, 40 pictures of flowers. So the point where I finally had to mute the guy, even though I like the flowers, if he was posting maybe two or three, that'd be great. 
but he posts dozens of them. I mean, AJ Cohn has. We all, you guys all know AJ. He's yeah. he's a yeah. brilliant guy. He does the. I I didn't wake up in such and such city every day. He's known for that. He's he's it's part of his personal brand, and he's done it so well that nobody tries to copy it. He do, he's the only one who does it. It's very interesting, and it reminds you that AJ likes to travel. That he's uh, you know kind of fun loving guy too. Or not well not kind of. He's a fun loving guy. He's a good guy. But we all have we all have a signature about ourselves. For a long time, nobody knew what the hell I do for a living. They just thought I ate gummy bears all day. <laughs> so I'm kind you of, mean that's not your job? Oh man, huh? I'm, I am no, totally shocked. I, I am totally shocked. I, I actually was, tried to I tried to make it my job. I did. <laughs> I, I did. I've been in contact with with the good folks at Haribo and and wanted to do a campaign for them. And they they looked at what I'd done and I almost got the the right to to do their brand page for them. Uh -huh. But it had to go through the Germans <laughs> for, for approval. And and sadly we were we were declined. But they know that I love I love their product and. Uh, um, and everybody else on Girls Watson will say. So, you know, it, it, so it, <clears throat> I hope I don't do it to excess. I hope I don't, you know, offend anybody with it. You know, I've worked on on issues of language and content and, you know, what words are appropriate, what words aren't appropriate. You know, I spend a lot of time in the Marine Corps and we develop a different language in the Marines and sometimes that's not appreciated. Uh, a guy named Sherman Smith once once sent me an email and he said, uh, "You know, I love the stuff you write, but I can't share this with my church group. You've got some interesting stuff here, but because of this word and that word, I can't share it." That that stung, but but it was information I really needed to hear, and um, uh, it, it's it's been very beneficial to kind of limit the expletives. And now a lot of times you'll see on something I write, expletive deleted. As opposed to <laughs> let them know that I want to say it, <laughs> but that That's I don't. Good. That's good. That's it's good. A, it's, it's kind of a there's a balance. I have a personal brand that goes along with the business, and I because I want people to know that that working with us is is a fun thing. You can it, it can be enjoyable, and that's it. You know, Sue Ann's kind of fun loving too. Everybody knows how how yeah. fun she is. So yeah, it uh, it helps. It actually helps with the business. I don't do it just for business, but uh, it helps more than it hurts. Well, I, I think part of it is is building that persona that is approachable, plus opening the you know the door for relationships. Exactly. That there is more to me than just business. There's more to me than just numbers and getting sales or whatever. There's a person here. And that if I am personable, you might remember me, and you might remember that, hey, somebody's looking for such and such, and they'll go off and give you that opportunity that because they know you. That's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. Every, all, all of us uh, come across a moment where there's something we need, and that need is going to be associated with someone we know. And it does, doesn't matter when. I mean, we've gotten business from people who – Saw us, you know, back in 2011, and they read. They went, you do that. I've gotten, I've gotten in, uh, PMs from people who say, "Don't you do that? Isn't that something you guys do?" I remember reading about something in one of your articles, and I was thinking about gummy bears, and at the same time, and it, that turned into a contract. That turned into business. Um, it happens all the time. It's it's a mind share thing. You want to you want to take up space in people's brains. So that at the moment they need something that you're uh, selling or a problem that you're solving, that they think about you, as opposed to a shotgun approach, like on Facebook, where you just kind of throw, you know, you blow a bunch of ads out into the into the ether and hope to hit somebody. Right. Uh, and with relevance. That is that is an old standard of uh, advertising, and I think that's why big corporations are still having trouble with social media because that's what they did. They did a wide span, you know, mm -hmm. one to many when uh, it's more of a one to one concept now on social media. Though I know we talk to a lot of people, it's still that almost one to one concept where we're going to talk just to you. And that's mm -hmm. that's hard. That's hard to do. It's a hard change for people. So, Jim. Yes, sir. 
What do you think about content? Are we over stimulating ourselves? Is there too much of it, or is it you know it's it's fine because you can control your feed? Is that part of it? Are we are we having people too sensitive to what's going on and getting angry about every little thing in their feed? I mean, they have the ability to block, they have the ability to you know uncircle, unfriend, so you don't have to see that information anymore. So are we uh, are we worrying about too much spam? I mean, because I know people go, oh, I hate spam, and it's like, yeah, but what you consider spam and what they consider spam and what they might consider spam over there is three different ways to look at it. So are we worrying about it too much? Is content just what it should be? Well, to preface, to let people know, I'm on the computer pretty much seven days a week many many hours a day because I do some programming with code to get my business to work a little better. Uh, I used to do code for clients for 20 years but I don't do that part anymore and a lot of what I do is marketing so I invite a lot of content so I can measure because to me marketing is one word it's measurement and you're measuring who's important who's not and for what we're doing today I think I want to just concentrate on four words filter silo and surge the the silo is how we live our lives there are certain silos we do where we eat and we interact with people that are close friends some people we talk to once in a while other people we only talk to in real life others we only talk to on the internet and we're comfortable as long as we maintain silos because that's just how people normally live. They have inner circle, outer circle, maybe a church group, maybe a business group, and that's part of how we naturally build our lives, and it's where circles kind of come from. In our internet definition, I think circles do get to be so cluttered that now we have to use the, the other word, and that is filter. Filter means you're responsible for tuning it out or making it more important than maybe it should be because you get so excited and that's where the word surge comes in when you first get into something you're willing to have all kinds of content meet everybody say hello then after a while you say that's enough I don't need to do that much interaction in fact now I don't have time for it so we build the little silo to keep some of this content away from us every single day or with the pictures in the morning we don't need 20 or 30 flower pictures when we want to get to other content. So I think that with me being Mr. Analytical, as my friends talk to me about that, they go, boy, you're analytical about everything. And I go, well, pretty much, yes, that's, I enjoy it. But that's where you get into this surge of content that it's up to you to say, now I'm going to dial it back or pay attention. Holiday weekend, some people just read, 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 read during the week they drive to work they do things with clients they don't have time for all of that the part that I think really gets in people's heads is what am I missing if I don't see everything and maybe I do a a like I wish I could read faster but then we get disappointed because so much of our content isn't all that important um, JC mentioned the reshares and so does Suzanne yes resharing a lot of content for people that just only reshare means you don't really learn about them and if you wanted to you'd have too little information but then if you say I don't really care about them the reshares are just annoying I'll turn I'll tune them out ignore them and I can go through a thousand posts pretty quickly because I have these little rules set up in my head stop 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 filter 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 so I don't know if that gives you a clue as to how I think about it, but I'm in the marketing side where I really want to see a lot of people yak, 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 or the ones that put up only really good stuff and people pay attention to them. I want to find out who those people are. Yeah, I agree with you. What I do is I do go through posts. I go through emails. I mean, as soon as that happens, um, you know, I'm filtering stuff myself. I'm looking at it quickly, opening it, seeing if there's – any pertinent content in there so I quickly scan through it and then decide okay I'm gonna say this for later scan dump 
you know, because if I don't need it, it doesn't have anything pertinent to me, I go on. Though I take a point to look at some stuff because I might discover something I never knew. And that's part of the equation of the idea of social media is discovery. And I really like discovery. And there's times when I get something I never would have thought of. I mean, I know that JC likes food. So, because uh, I see him talk about it, which actually is a great discovery because he and I have had a few conversations about food. It's fun. You know, we'll jokingly say to each other, you know, yeah, we'll talk about it. I'll show something I've cooked. He'll show something he cooks. It's sort of fun. You go to his site, you go to his feed, you see that. Uh, but those are the things you look for. Those are the discoveries that I look for. John, uh, was, it the, uh, was it the Elvis Presley pound cake? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, that was fabulous. That was fabulous. Yes. Yeah, see, those are the things that you, you, you know, those are the gems in life. And I think what we do is we tend to either lump people into a certain category and then we never look at their stuff, which is wrong because there might be something worthy there. But on the other side, we only have so much time in a day. So we don't have the ability to read everything that comes on our feed. So I see where Jim was saying it's very good. He looks at it from a marketing point, which is very good. Uh, JC also looks at it from a business marketing point, too. I do, too. I have to take a look at all mine because I do a part of our business, a large part of our business, my wife's and I, here on the net. And I have to think about what I'm doing and what my persona is. There's the other side of it, uh, which we haven't brought up. If you put up stuff that you shouldn't, people will look at you and go and peg you, and you've lost a client possibly, all because of an opinion, all because you have, um, you know, so you have to be, you walk a, a very thin line here. And I know some people say, well, you should be, you know, who you are. Well, yeah, but sometimes, as JC said, uh, you know, we use colorful language, and uh, some people don't like the colorful language. And that meant a whole sector of his business, which could be used by those people, aren't going to be used because the person who is the gatekeeper to that said, eh, your language is a little too, you know, too much for us. We're going to have to, you know, I wish we could use you. But well, then you... Know, you, just find, you find other words to say. You find, right. you find more articulate ways to get your point across. And that's... It, it's, it takes practice. It, it takes a lot of practice. I mean, I mean, the Marines were one thing, but then I went to Microsoft. <laughs> those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and people don't understand. There's a yeah, you know, and there is a vernacular in every group. You know that that sometimes is a little different than what we're used to, or it's what we're used to. Uh, so you know, I hear it on the bus with kids. I, I'm a school bus driver during the day, and uh, you know, I hear language sometimes where you go, you know, you have to tell, hey guys, tone that down. But it's conversational language now. Some of it. And you have to learn to understand that, okay, guys, there's an appropriate place to use that. Once you're off the bus and you're walking down the, you know, together, you can use whatever you want. But on the bus, we keep it within these parameters. And in your right. classroom, you probably have to keep it within these parameters. In between the classroom, you're talking to your friends, you can say whatever you damn well want. Right. But, uh, That's why I use the word silo, is that there are always these behavior patterns. We look around and say we're in a restaurant. We don't behave the same way as if we're in our own kitchen. Correct. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the group you're with and the group you're next to. I mean, what I don't like are some of the people that have these very graphic T-shirts or decals on their vehicles, and yet they're taking their kids to school and parking at the shopping center, and other people with their kids have to walk past whatever they're displaying, and you go, that isn't fair. You know, a parent with a four- or five-year-old child shouldn't be walking past a guy who's got some, you know, ugly picture depicting maybe goth or something else or something worse, but they do. And yet, wait a minute, you're out in the community now. It's not like you can stand there and affect everybody. So, yeah, the siloing, I think, is very important in the way we approach all this content and decide to deal with it. Hey, that's me. I want to talk like that, too. But do I want it recorded on YouTube for the the next 30 or 34 years. Not really. Right. Right. Yeah, I think you brought up some great points when you put it into the different areas that you did, Jim, was amazing. I think that's a great way to bring up the whole process of us looking at content. And I think people tend to uh, just sit back and let it happen or 
they complain about it because it's easier to complain. Let's face it, in this society, we're we're much easier to complain about something than we are to fix it. Uh, well, complaining you complaining know. is content, you know. Right, and it's great, you know, and it can be good content. Some people make careers out of that. Uh, so, when we look at this, we're going to go to a guy now, Harlan. Now, Harlan is the person who is the average guy who's just here having a great time. He has some beautiful stuff he shows. He talks to a lot of people, but he's here for just the uh, fun and enjoying. So, is there too much content or not enough, Harlan? I think there's just the right amount. The, the, <laughs> the quality of the content that you were talking about, the, the posting of trivia, caught my eye. I see the part of Google Plus that I see is a microcosm of the entire population of the world. And I think Susan, off the top of her head, could come up with a, a very simplistic profile of the sort of person, the type of person, who posts trivia. I know a man who utters nothing but trivia. He knows nothing but trivia. I got in the car. I see him two, maybe three times a week on a regular basis for about an hour, an hour and a half. We pulled away from my place the other day, and the first words out of his mouth were, well, we had meatloaf last night. Now, that's rather a lot like the posts that you cited that, that were so trivia. I don't want to hear where you're running. You know what I mean? I, I, who cares if you had pasta last night? There's a, there's no point to that, but but if you sympathize a little bit with the person who's making that post, and maybe, as I said, Suzanne could imagine a, a profile on a person like that. This This guy is so limited by real and imagined limitations that his life is is virtually nothing he's like the thinnest candle in the menorah it, it uh, he has no opinions the, the the notion of having an opinion is as foreign to him as is gambling would be to me and I see a lot of that in a lot of people who post trivia I would I would think that it's part of the character of Google Plus, just as those posts of huge interest are part of the character. There's the full spectrum there, personality and capacity and, and uh, psycho-emotional behavior, and the uh, the trivial posts. Not that I like them. I I just I block them. I get rid of them after a while. But I understand the people who are making those posts. What is important about where you're running or what you had to eat last night? Almost literally nothing. But to them, if they see it on Google, it's kind of published. It, it creates an immortalization for them <laughs> and validates their existence. And you could tell what they did over a week's time or so. Well, he, he went running here. He had pasta Thursday night. Uh, his cat had kittens. You know, whoopee for the next six months. We'll get kitten pictures from him now. Something <laughs> of meaning has taken place, and he can post it on Google with his Google with his camera. You know, Arlen, you're 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 completely right. Um, we work with a number of businesses where someone will, will own a business and it's time for them to start talking about what they do and start start meeting people and they have no idea how to have an opinion online, how to form, form a, a point of view and explain a point of view and let people know about themselves. It, and it's a it's a process it, depending upon how you were raised. A lot of people were raised where you know children are seen and not heard or, um, you know, don't talk at the dinner table. You know, all of us have gone to Thanksgiving dinner and we were told don't talk about politics, don't talk about religion. And for, for people who do, who don't have a, 
have a, a problem expressing their opinion, not me, but <laughs> all those other people, that can be extremely intimidating. Somebody puts up an opinion, and you might want to say something about that, but you think, well, you know, I wonder if my idea is smart. I wonder if I'm going to get ridiculed. I wonder if I'm going to be told I'm wrong. But if I just put up what somebody else says, if I just link to someone else's article or somebody else's trivia, or if I just say, you know, I went and got a hot dog. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still alive. I'm still a human being, but I didn't take any risk. I didn't, I didn't put myself out there so it's safe. And you know that only 5% of the people on Google Plus actually post anything at all. Only 5% of us. The rest of us just read what everybody else puts up there, whether it's trivia, whether it's an article or an opinion piece or something interesting. That, that's it. Can you imagine if, if all 350 million of us were actually posting? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Could you see the servers all go down? Could you yeah, see Google I mean, like, what the hell's going on here, people? <laughs> right, and, and, and I think it's part of the reason why Google Plus is, is really, it's a hard transition from Facebook, and a really hard transition from Twitter, and because there's dialogue here. It, you can go to Twitter, and you can say anything you want, and you can close it. You don't have to, you know, stick around because if there's a conversation, it's not going to thread and you're not going to see, you can't make the connections between the comment and the responses. But on Google+, Plus, if you put up something that's interesting to people, like, I had, I don't know, 30, 40 responses to this, this silly notion that Canadian money t smells like maple syrup. <laughs> yes, that was just, great, that was great. I just put it up there, and it's something people want to talk about these things, and, and, um, people can read that stuff. You know, there's, some of us are, are online for entertainment purposes. Some of us are up there for sharing. Some of us are up there for business. Who knows why, why people are up there, but they all have their, their, their reasons. And, and I found working with, with clients who a person, you know, it takes guts to start a business. It takes guts to go do all the accounting and investing and, you know, the, procuring products, creating an audience, selling, all that stuff. People find that easier than just introducing themselves online. They really do. It's, ama it's amazing, but, it, but it's out there. So Arlen, you're right on the money. It, it's, uh, it, it's hard. It's, it's trivia makes it easy for people to validate their lives without, without taking the risk. So I have a question for Harlan. Do you think your friend tells other people that he saw you and talked with you during the day? Yes. OK. So you're just part of his trivia monologue? Yes, he is. Okay. He has most of his friends are on uh, <clears throat> on the computer. Okay. And uh, my only friends are on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a correlation. <laughs> so you know, I I have uh, I have him to look forward to for conversation every okay. Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. It lasts about an hour. Yeah. And I do most of the talking. And uh, he sometimes he gets mad at me because I ask him questions. There you go again, Rob, asking me one of these damn questions. <laughs> it, it, it upsets him, you know. And I'm only asking his opinion. You know? so, right. <laughs> so he, I, if you see the profile there, there's nothing to validate that person's existence. <laughs> and so the only thing he can think of is trivia. We had meatloaf for dinner last night. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop, goddamn pee, you know? <laughs> what do you think about Benghazi, for Christ's sake? <laughs> he doesn't know anything about it. He knows nothing about it. And a lot of and a large amount of people don't. They only know what they're you know, what they're told or what their the opinion they're given. And that's another part of this whole process is that are our opinions just handed to us? Is there a is there a sheet that says, Here's what you're gonna talk about this week? And that's what we get from news, that's what we get from the television. Here's the subject that's important. Here's the number one shows. This is the show you're supposed to be watching. This is what you're supposed to be doing. This is what you're supposed to be wearing. This is what you're supposed to care about. You are supposed to care about these cats who play the piano. 
Um, you know, these are the things we're being told. Now, are we being spoon fed our content of what we're supposed to talk about? And those of us who are doing the five percent, are we opening up the doors and saying, "Hey, people, follow me. There's more to look at. Trust me. You can even have an opinion." Now, Suzanne, you haven't had a chance to talk, so I'm going to let you talk about that. Or I should say this way, Suzanne. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I love the spoon feeding. Uh, when my daughter was small, uh, as you will know with your own children, I spoon fed her because it was neater, it was faster, and the, you know more of the food actually wound up in her mouth than all over the place. And there was a point where she decided she had had enough of this crap, and she started pushing the spoon away. And showed me very clearly that she wanted to eat on her own, whether it was a mess or not. And uh, I think in the same way, people have the ability and the responsibility to, you know, push the spoon away and make up their own minds. Now, obviously, this is something that is inherently not encouraged in our culture. It is not something that the educational systems, I, I know in America, they didn't use to. And uh, they don't really learn much in Europe either. Uh, they don't encourage necessarily independent thinking. They don't, don't necessarily encourage critical thinking. Uh, very often they don't encourage thinking of any kind. And the, the modern media, whether it's pseudo news channels like Fox, whether it's uh, some of the newspapers, uh, whatever you want to take, don't really do that either. And at the same time, because of the, the amounts, the vast amounts of information that's available to people, they at some point, understandably, choose to you know, opt for one specific kind of news station or source of their information. <clears throat> Especially those who are, let's say, a little bit narrower in the scope of their interests or their intellectual, their willingness to engage intellectually, let's put it that way. Okay. So yeah, these people are choosing to be spoon-fed, and when you listen to their opinions, they are parroting whatever the news du jour is, um, and you know, the rest will be free of. And I think one of the things that I've noticed in the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, in the, particularly in the United States, that is for me cause for concern, is this glorification of the banal and of the stupid. Okay? Um, <laughs> I mean, this, this really, I'm sorry, but, you know, uh, you know, but it's funny. That's been around since the dawn of time. And the one that does it the best is Hollywood. I'm going to tell you. Hollywood has been doing it since the, since the silent era. We've always made the buffoon, made that person one of our icons. We always thought that guy who, could get, uh, who gets beat up or we throw around or we find funny. Slapstick, since the dawn of... Theater has always been one of the things. We glorify the idiots. We glorify them. We always have. And so it's not something new to America. It's not John, something it's worse Europe than Europe. It's, it's, it's what worse the than difference is, is that we have a mass produced part of this now. So that's the difference. I don't think it's any different than it was in the 20s or in the 1800s or the 1900s or anything else. It's just that now we have a distribution system. You want to glorify this concept that at one time we were so wonderfully enlightened that we could do no at one time only the people who we figure had the right to speak were allowed to speak in the last 20 years more people who don't really who some people would say shouldn't have the right to speak and there are many people who would say that now have the ability to get their message out that's the difference is that a good thing though john is that necessarily a good i'm not thing? saying it's good or it's bad i'm just saying that <laughs> it's not any there. different it's not any different but now we hear the other part of the message we hear from the masses who are um not as informed as we would like them to be, though they think they're informed, and they think they have the information they need. So you or I deciding that they're not informed, 
you know, is uh, is an opinion on our part. I'm just saying that this is no different than it's been for the last, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years of mankind. Let me, let me, let me tell you why it's different. I, this is, this is, Sam, you should go first. It's, you, it's, it's your ahead. riff, but go I don't want to talk when you go ahead. John, if, if I were wearing a shirt, if I were wearing shoes now, I would take one off and pound on the table. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't because I wouldn't allow you. I would, I would take off my shoe and pound it too. No, I, I think that uh, I go ahead. You're allowed your opinion. Okay. It's okay. beautiful. Okay, hold on. You said we were going to disagree here. This is good. Yeah. Um, I, you are right. There has always been, there have always been, you know, this this amusement and glorification to a certain degree of buffoonery. Um, yes, but until not so long ago, there was also a certain element of judgment and a certain element of, you know, this is not how, this is not a state to aspire to, okay? Um, you know, you look at the Three Stooges, they were idiots, okay? They were not Mr. Normal, they were not some, they were not a role model. People did not want that. If you look at, if you go back and read Neil Postman from the 1980s, okay, um, he, he wrote then already about the uh, increasing stupidity of the news shows in American television. And he made comparisons in the 1980s about speeches, political speeches, about uh, educational speeches, lectures, etc., that were going on in the 1900s and compared them to, you know, the, the 60s, the 70s in, in the last century. And he, just, he found that, you know, not only had the vocabulary dumbed down incredibly, but the length of time that people spoke, the, the, uh, the topics they discussed, etc., has completely gone back. And um, that is something that gets worse and worse and worse. And when you get to the point where in all seriousness, and I mean this just blows my mind, in all seriousness, people ask the question, when they're voting for the president of the supposedly strongest and most powerful nation on earth, which guy do you want to have a beer with? God, I'm going to say it, God damn it, I don't want to have a beer with the president, I want him to be the smartest guy on earth. I want him to be capable, I want him to be whatever. But What's happening here, and has been happening, and, and this is what I mean by glorification of stupidity, is you know it's this regular Joe, and what you read if you if you look at any kind of news, if you look at any kind of um, even you know as you were saying television, films, Hollywood, etc. The elitists, well, they have an education, and they use polysyllabic words like the Hollywood. They must be elitist. We don't want that, you know, because we're just regular guys or whatever. And this is the kind of thing. To this degree, it has not been there yet. People used to aspire to having an education. People used to aspire to bettering themselves, to living with a form of honor, uh, values, whatever. Now they aspire to have a bigger car, to have the bigger house, um, you know, and, and just show their tacky, tawdry taste off in the worst possible way. But I mean, they might as well just, you know, paste themselves with hundred dollar bills or whatever the biggest denomination is. Just, so, so things have changed. Yes, there was stupidity in Hollywood, but think back, John, to the um, think back to the the comedies, there's a name for them that were in the 30s and 40s. Screwball uh, comedies, you mean? Yes. They were so damn clever. Okay, they were mm -hmm. clever. There was irony, there was intelligence, there was play on words, there were all kinds of allusions to historical... I agree. 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 I But I... John, can I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Please, just please, go ahead. How many of you guys remember Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous? A television show. Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I only Robert remember the caviar. caviar. Okay. Robert well, Lee, okay. yeah, caviar... That's all I remember is caviar. That but was it. If young girls in America are being taught, and boys too, but to a large extent, young girls are being taught, being taught, 
It's good to be famous. No matter what you do, get famous. If you want a better life, Get yourself famous. And that no longer means work your ass off, get an education, do something noteworthy with your life to become famous. It means make a sex tape. It means uh, do a, a rap album denigrating women. Um, oh, be a bachelor or a bachelorette where, you know, one girl's going to go out with 20 guys and pick one for the rest of their life. That's what it means now to be famous. It no longer means actual success. It means it means a kind of feigned success because you're you, you know you're 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 in in, a, in, a, in an environment of success because you have all the trappings. It does not mean you're successful. These people have some of the worst self-esteem problems. Where you know you see the drug problems and the the you know to me if if you if, if a young girl the expiring to make a sex tape, she has problems. Right? It's just, in my opinion, she has problems. But that's the message that she's getting out of Hollywood because there's no judgment. That's the part I was clapping about, Suzanne. There's no judgment. There's nobody saying, yeah, you got, you, you know, what are your kids going to say? What, are you, what, are your, what do your parents think about that? Is that how you were raised? But, but hey, she's famous. You know, I'm, 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 I'm famous. <laughs> Who cares how I got there? I'm famous. Well, just, a lot were nuts. raised like that. That's Pardon me? The that's the other problem is that a lot were raised like that. You're, you're right. You're right. A lot were. And uh, and I think it started way back in the 70s with Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. We were taught, you're supposed to want this. No, Nothing about how to get it. You know, they, they right now, uh, you know, corporations are all, they're the bad guys. Corporations are the bad guys. Or rich people are the bad guys. But they, there's very little discussion about people who are wealthy, what they did to get there. How they struggled. In most cases, they struggled. They didn't inherit. They struggled. They worked. They excelled, and they achieved what they wanted to achieve. And in most cases, what they were trying to achieve wasn't wealth at all. It was they were just doing something that they really loved to do, and they did it so well that somebody found a market for it. And then, okay, I'm gonna stop. I, I you guys know. Yeah, no, sorry, go, go, the, go our ahead. Our new Jim. oxymoron. Our new oxymoron is reality TV. Mm. <laughs> Yes. 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 yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Which is again content. How much of that content do we really need? Yet that's the content we have on television. I mean, there are whole networks that are based upon <laughs> reality. Fox Network itself survives on different types of reality TV. Mm -hmm. I mean, for heaven's sake. You know, there's another aspect. Of, if, if I could just 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 for one second, I, I don't mean to monopolize the conversation. There was I yield the floor to JC. I'm so sorry, do I. I yield the floor too. Just 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 this, this one thing, and, I, and I'll shut up. I promise. There was oh, a show on Fox that I used to love. That I would I would put it on the TiVo. I would never miss it. It was called So You Think You Can Dance. You guys ever yeah. you guys know that show? Yeah. Well, at some point, instead of showing dancing, they started giving us these human interest stories about how, you know, the bad things that had happened to a particular dancer to, and now they've gotten up to the point where they've done an audition. But to me, when you're auditioning, you haven't done crap, excuse me. You know, when you're on Broadway and you're dancing in a professional, you know, group, then okay, you've achieved. But they, they've made it so that, that every, every human interest story of overcoming adversity is what makes people great. Over, overcoming adversity makes you human. What else are you going to do? Are you going to sit back and say, oh, adversity got me. It, what, <laughs> it drives me. I couldn't watch the show. It's unwatchable now because I don't want to hear about the sob story of how somebody got on stage to do their audition. I want to see him dance. And there's and every year there's been less and less and less and less dancing, and more and more and more schlock, of of, of you know make me cry, make me make me connect with that person on a on an emotional level. If you dance your ass off, we'll connect on an emotional level. Go ahead, Sudan. So, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm I'm I have, I have a question for you, JT. Have mm. you 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 obviously watch the you know the, the media closely. Um, I've missed a lot of it by being in Europe, but when, every time I was in the States starting in the 80s, I noticed that, you know, on, on television shows, on, on movies, and especially in commercials, this thing with, you deserve, you know, <laughs> these, this, this, you're worth the best, you deserve only this, and you deserve this, that, and the other thing, 
And it just creates such an atmosphere of, I don't mean this politically, entitlement, of personal, individual entitlement. I am old, okay? You know, and I do not need to uh, apply myself. I don't need to try. I don't need to get past adversity because I am old. I deserve. And so, that makes people so right. dumb. You're so right. You know, if you come to Canada, I'm going to throw a salmon at you, okay? Mm. You come, oh. come, hang out. Come to Canada. Let me buy you dinner. Yes. So you are absolutely, absolutely right. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. When? Yeah. when? Well, well, we can talk about it off offline. But yeah, the, we'll talk but, about but later. Absolutely. Well, let the, me toss the, one more thing out there and get your opinion. What today the definition is totally changed in my mind. What constitutes a blockbuster movie these days versus earlier? Yeah, it used to be. Um, it, it used to be that it was a good movie. It used to be that you either learned something or you were extremely entertained, or um, it told a story accurately of some notable event in history. Now it makes money. Blockbusters are what makes money, and that's why we now have this thing of celebrity. And I, 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 I said I wasn't going to talk anymore. Right. <laughs> I yield at, my time. Yeah. Look at the okay. worst hot list on Google Plus. To me, the worst part of Google Plus, and I love Google Plus. Everybody knows that. I wish they would take that what's hot list and just s can it, okay? Because all it does is create little blocks of celebrity, and you've got a hundred posts of of one piece of content, couple of questions, and then it's, I agree, I agree, I don't agree, I agree, I don't agree, I don't agree, up to the 500 limit. It drives me insane. What makes it hot, and, and it's listed as hot because it has all these responses of no information. It's, it's, uh, it, it, the, it, okay. <laughs> yeah. it. No, that's, that's <laughs> right. No, no, you're, if you're they fantastic. Would get Jason. rid of the what's hot list, and yes. say, you know, what if they had a, you, you could vote for something that's insightful or something that's informative and say, do the informative list, do the insightful list, do the funny list, and let people decide. That what hot, the what hot list sucks. It just sucks. It does. Well, okay. I, I just never see it. I click it away. I don't ever see it. Well, it's the same concept of we used to have Catherine Hepburn or we used to have uh, Betty yeah. Davis or Taluda Bankhead. We used to have these women who, you know, Sometimes you wonder, you know, their their personal lives might have had some stuff, but what we remember from them was what we saw on the screen as to who they were with that persona. Now what we have is Paris Hilton. We have uh, the Kardashians. We have the, and I'm not talking about the ones from uh, Star Trek. <laughs> and we're talking. <laughs> Those were cool. Uh, yeah, yes, they were. Those were cool. Uh, we have people like that, uh, you know, the. Was it Lizzie Lohan and uh, uh, um, um, Amanda Bynes? Now these wonderful uh, young women, or whatever, who are suddenly celebrities, and Britney Spears, who's a celebrity, not because of how good she does, but by how bad she is, and by how much she causes trouble and has drug problems and has to go out and be. Uh, you know, how many times do we hear about on late night jokes about? Lohan, you know, it's not fair, but that's what we hear about. I mean, for heaven's sakes, half of Jay Leno's whole monologue is about where he saw Lohan next, and you go. So once again, it's perpetuated in our in our entertainment field. It's not anymore about the wonder when we used to talk about Sinatra, who had you know his problem. He's a womanizer. He did all that, but what we saw was Frank Sinatra, the performer. What we yeah. saw was that stuff we wanted to live to be the Rat Pack. We wanted to be witty. Have uh, be a guy, be one of the men, you know, or those type of things. Now, what we want to be is, and I agree, is that we want to be as dumb and as stupid and cause as much trouble as we can because that's what gets you noticed. That's what life is about. And I agree. But on the other side, is it because things have changed or is it because we now see those things more? Because those things were were put away. They were not shown. The the you know the Rock Hudson was a ladies' man, but everybody in Hollywood knew that he was gay. Everybody knew exactly. that he had boyfriends. But what we were told and what we were shown was Rock Hudson, the man, the guy who had the ladies, who was you know, and we didn't care. And if you know, because but if we were shown the other side, Rock Hudson would have had a career. If we were shown how Dean Martin, you know, cheated on his wife and. 
all this, we wouldn't have made him the star we had on TV because we would have all been appalled. The man keeps, you know, he left his wife with his kids and went off with this other woman. That would have been, you know, but it was all hush hush. It was, it, it was there. People could find it, but it was hush hush. So we're now living in a world where all the information is just thrown out there. Boom. Here it is. Now we have to decide what we're going to do with it. I think, John, it's the, the dumber the population, the easier it can be controlled. I, I think it's, it's just that simple. And it's about control. I mean, I mean, you know, elections in America. I mean, come on. <laughs> For heaven's okay. sakes, you could vote a dog into office if you could get it sitting there with a good beer. <laughs> and a good platform. People would vote for the dog. I can tell you right now, the Chihuahua that runs the campaign, that runs the car the mm -hmm. commercials for uh, Taco mm -hmm. Bell, could be president if he but did if, it right. If you remember when 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 George Bush was running against John Kerry, John Kerry mm -hmm. decided that he had to be. You know, John Kerry is is what Susanna described as in the, what they call elitist, right? But John Kerry decided that what he needed to do. Was to go hunting, and put on a put on a uh, you know hunting jacket and carry a rifle around. And he walked into a gun store and said, "Can I get me a rifle here?" It, it, he decided that he needed to dumb down his persona to connect with the masses. Well, what? why? And then he goes to he goes to Philadelphia. Excuse me, I follow politics. He goes to Philadelphia for a cheesesteak, a Philly cheesesteak. But he said, can I have it with Swiss? <laughs> and they had attacked him for being a leaders because he wanted Swiss on his cheese day. Ah! <laughs> yeah, but on the other side, uh, George Bush worked at George Bush, it worked into his... He's an elitist too. He grew up with a silver gold the spoon, patrician, the and, but he, everybody sees him didn't. as the average guy out there. Just well, it's because he was stupid. No, he wasn't. <laughs> the man is not stupid. He's the not the man is the man, yeah, the man, the man, the man is actually very jets. yeah. He's the man is stupid. actually the man is actually very cagey and knew exactly the persona he was going to portray and did it beautifully. Okay. And he knew how to use the system. They won the election not because. Uh, he was popular. They won the election because they knew how to use the numbers and get where they're at. So that's what happens. Yeah. So to say he's stupid is uh, George I, don't, I never, I never, I never would have voted for the guy, and I don't like the guy. But I will not call him stupid. Uh, I know he okay. knows he how to. That way. Yes, mm -hmm. that was it right he there. That, that was the thing. He knew how to give the persona, and people went, "Well, I'll vote for him because he's, well, he's me." He said new killer. Yeah. And people went, oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said new killer. No. Yeah. yeah. But you know, we yeah. could go we could go into all this type of stuff. What we're actually we're actually at the magic hour of uh oh. of yeah, we've done an hour. You guys have done magnificent. I even brought tension into it. Great, thank you. Uh, that's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> you guys were good. You actually had a great conversation, so thank you. Um, I want to then, what we do here at the end of my shows is I give each and every one to do their final uh, summation of today's topic. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, Harlan. I'm going to give you the first try today. Well, I haven't, I haven't paid so much attention to a hangout since they began with me on them. <laughs> <laughs> I think Suzanne is so hot when she gets cold. I can hardly stand. Harlan, 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 you're welcome. Because I knew you liked it. I know when she gets riled up, you really think she's hot. So I knew I could rile it up. So that's what I did. So you're welcome. Psycho emotional Harley Davidson here. What? <laughs> Actually, she's a very intelligent woman who happens to have a fantastic opinion. That's what I like about Suzanne. Go I ahead, Harley. The supply of gin that she calls white wine that she's. <laughs> <laughs> I it's thought she was Latina. calling out white tea. Yeah, there she is. No, it's Latina. I admit it. I was hoping David would come, so I had to have my good wine here. <laughs> As JC, I am I'm just happy with everything you said. I, I am in complete agreement with everything, all your observations. i I hope you come back. You should be a regular here. Oh thank you, Arlen. Yes. 
Okay, so are, are you? Do you have anything you want to say about the whole subject, Harlan? Do you have anything more? No, I don't think so. Not not off the top of my head. Not right now. No. That's good. I just want to make sure I, I didn't, you know, give you your opportunity. Uh, Jim, please. You're next. Oh, I thought Harlan's meatloaf story was the the essence. Yes, um, it was a highlight. It was actually right. the whole. It's, that was it's the, the word rest. that we'll remember for the next four weeks anyway, until the next show, I guess. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm glad that you invited me back. This is my second time, and I really enjoyed it. You know, it's here it's Sunday afternoon. Right now it's about three o'clock in the afternoon, and where you normally say, "Okay, on the weekend, not much is going to happen. I'm in control of my own destiny." Well, this show changed that a little bit because we had a lot of discussions about content and the stream, as they call it, and accurately so, the stream of all this content. And what do you do? I remember that commercial that was a campaign both on television as well as print ad that was so effective. It's the man sitting in this overstuffed armchair with his hands over the armrests in front of a speaker that was blowing his hair back because <clears throat> it was so powerful. And it's like you're sitting in this armchair, and because of the expression on his face and the fact he's in profile and black and white, it's almost like you get to read in everything you want to overlay because it's not telling you any particular message. Well, the content that comes at us, we get to do with our overlay. What does it really mean? Is it important? Is it a, is it a ridiculous thing? Is it really important? Who do I look up to? Who do I want to follow? I think one of the things we have these days is we're in search of mentors or leaders that we can pay attention to consistently, not just when they're showing some brilliance and then they fall back into the mundane. We go, okay, I, I like to remember when you were really good with your content, not you're filling it in or now you're surrounded by handlers. And I think we see so much of the handling these days, the content is something we have to really look for and pull out on our own. So today's discussion was more examples of, yeah, we're responsible and we have this our own overlay on what we really want to see and keep. So that's that's basically my summary. Well, thank you, Jim. That was good. Actually, that's a great. That was good. I'm impressed with that. Thank you. So, JC, your I'm turn. I'm reading man. it off a teleprompter because <laughs> I'm sharing what someone else said. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's that. That's look. That's reality TV for you right now. <laughs> yeah. Right off of Fox News and Friends, you know, yeah, Friends. Right yeah, that's what I do. I just turn on a feed over here and just read what's going by. <laughs> just, you can read stuff, okay. It's much I easier. I a keyword search for content yeah. and, yeah. And, and I look so intelligent when I do it, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Jim, that was fantastic. Yeah. JC, please, give us your take. Well, I, I, I'm just glad to be here. I'm, I'm, I appreciate the invite. I, I've been wanting to do your show for a while. I've been really, really busy. And I did say, please save me a seat for this one because content is kind of a, a pet peeve with me. Well, you always have a seat here. Trust well, me, you always have a seat. Well, thank you. Thank you. And and I got to concur. Suzanne, brains are sexy on a woman. I concur. Okay? They're just, <laughs> brains are just sexy. I'm, I, you know, my, my sweetheart is one of the smartest people I've ever met. And... Uh, and you all know that from her, her stuff in the stream, but I, yeah, brands are sexy. Maybe now you'll circle me. <laughs> I have you circle. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But as far as, you know, um, Carlin's right. I love the meatloaf thing. I love it. And I appreciate your, your, um, your uh, compliment. That's, that's very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think that, you know, everybody knows I'm a Google Plus fanboy, and I am because... It's social media that allows us to use the silos, like like Jim was saying. We actually get to filter and decipher and actually discriminate. I don't think there's anything wrong with positive discrimination. We're all we all have our goals online and, and in our lives and we associate with the people who who we either want to further their goals or we want them to help us further ours. And the suggestion that it should just be one big pot of goo of, of everybody, it never works out. You know, you see the measurements about Google Plus, about the level of engagement. None of them take into account the fact that most of the engagement that takes place is private. It's within circles. There's all kinds of engagement going on, but you won't, 
You won't know that unless you ask Google. The, all the outside measurement tools about what Google Plus is doing, they don't measure who, our, our internal conversations. They don't measure the PMs between us. They don't measure um, if, if someone has a, has a nice picture and we share it to their circles. They don't, they, it, it's, just, it's just kind of unfair, but I, I, um, I, hope, I hope, John, you'll do another segment on content about content curation, people going out and buying content and, and posting it as their own, one of, one of my current pet peeves. Um, I, I have a few things to say on that subject. But thank you for thanks for having me here. And I, to me, the highlight was what what Suzanne said about um, um, entitlement, because we have reached a point where a lot of people believe that they deserve it because somebody told them they deserve it. Not and and the whole connection between earning what you have and having what you have. That's it's just broken. It's com it's completely broken. Uh, so I hope that uh, over time. Uh, I'll get to be part of more conversations like this, and thanks for having me. Great, great time. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure, and you were a fantastic part of the show today. Yeah, uh, but I always talk too much, man. I always take. You know, whenever nah, I'm on the show, I nah. talk the whole damn show. So nah. I curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's all. Okay. We allow that. Uh, Dan does too. So you know, we have. Okay, to thank you. Yeah. No, but you. Suzanne, your final or can. Your inspirational thoughts for the end of the day. Well, thank you. Before I completely disappear in the dark here, <laughs> I'm, I'm in my winter garden, and it, as you can tell, it's getting dark, and I hadn't turned on the light. So, um, yeah. Uh, it, this has been a fantastic conversation, JC. It was really wonderful, you know, throwing things back and forth with you. And, and Jim, you're a gentleman who, who what? Sees his time regularly. I found that very charming. Uh, Harlan, as always, with um, his his interesting takes on things, and the meatloaf was great. Yes, and John, I loved fighting with you. It was fun. Uh, but next time I'll wear shoes, okay, <laughs> um, so I can pound on the table. <laughs> Just to sum up, content. I think. I think. Everybody has pretty much touched on, on the concept of personal responsibility. And that to me is just the, the key question, both in terms of what you put out as content and what you take in. You are responsible, you have it under you have the the technology and you have the possibilities to control it, especially with Google Plus. There are so many different ways. Um, to decide what it is you see. I have so many different circles of people uh, you know, with different interests and, and um, according to topics and this, that, the other thing. You can, if you put in the effort, if you put in a little bit of um, mind grease, uh, you can definitely uh, control what it is you see, when you see it, how much of it you see. And you know, these complaints about um, that some people have, Google is uh, ghost town, or Google is this, or Google is that. Well, damn it, you're not putting any effort into it. You know, and there I coast. Okay? Um, so I'll leave it at that. We're bonded. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Suzanne. As always, well put and well way to summarize it. Thank you so much. You're you bring such uh, wonder and insightfulness, and yes, I enjoyed arguing with you, though I could take either side of that issue. I just throw it out there to cause a little conflict and have some fun. <laughs> That's what That's I good. do. <laughs> That's good. That's what I do. So, my personal views, um, I'm going to tell you right now, content, um, it's up to you. As Jim, as everybody here has greatly said, uh, it's up to you how you want to silo it. It's up to you how you want to create, you know, put it into areas. It's also up to you how you put it out. Uh, you can just tell us what you ate today. You can tell us that all you had was meatloaf. That's fine. Uh, there are people out there who will listen to that and find that interesting. There are people who won't. So, you know, do your content. It's up to the rest of us to decide whether we want to read it, you know, view it, put it somewhere, or comment. That's the reality. None of it is controlled by any of us. Uh, there are some 
areas where we're told what we're supposed to watch and what we're supposed to care about and that everything should have some type of meaning and some type of relevance. Well, sometimes meatloaf has relevance to people. Let's face it. Sometimes. That has re sometimes. Meatloaf always, is always relevant. Always relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> my mother makes this great. My mother makes this great Dutch meatloaf, which she, and that I remember as a kid. It was really good. I remember that. Yeah. But I digress as usual. See content, content. <laughs> but I want to appreciate that uh, you took the time to come here, all of you, my band of wonderful minds. This is a you know we had a great time we had a good talk. Uh, content is uh, yes there is a lot of fat, but there's also a lot of nutrition, and you know sometimes you can't have a good tasty meal without a little fat. Let's face it, fat gives you flavor, so don't forget to uh, have a little fat with that nutrition. Yeah, it's there. You need it to sort of make it all work. So uh, enjoy your content. Know that some content is uh, whatever you want it to be. So I might not agree with it, might not care, but you do. So if you like uh, watching Honey Boo Foo or whatever that show is with that girl from the South, fine, good for you. If you care to figure out who's the next Bachelorette or Bachelor, fine. Or if you like knowing about the cat that plays the piano beautifully, that's okay. Your content and what you want to watch is your business. My content and what I want to put up is my business. If you don't like it, don't circle me or uncircle me. Don't, and, don't, and don't feel bad about doing it. Uh, you know, if there wasn't a connection, there's, no, there's nothing lost here. You and I didn't connect. That's all. Life is okay. Go on with your lives. Enjoy. All right? So next week we will be back here, and next week we're going to talk about reality. What really is reality? That's what we're going to talk about. Are we talking reality TV? Are we talking reality here on the net? When we talk authenticity, are we seeing the real authenticity or are we seeing a canned authenticity? Think about that. That's where we're coming. I hope all of you can be here for that one. So next week, it's reality. Man, it bites. Okay? <laughs> all right. And I want to thank all of you. And remember to share. Always share. Share it. There's little buttons down there. Share. Plus us. And when you share me, I do the share dance. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. I love to be shared, people. And I share, too. That's the beauty of social media is sharing. It's the gold standard. We can plus all we want, but share. And when you share, don't just share. Tell us why you shared it. Tell us what was compelling that made you hit the share button. All right? Have a great week. We'll see you again. And uh, that's next Sunday. <laughs> right here at the same bat channel, same bat time. And with, I hope, the same wonderful band of beautiful and wonderful minds. Take care, people. Have a great day.